Hello there, fellow adventurers. This is Sorvastian coming to you from Riders of Icarus with another taming guide, this time for Terror Karev. So Terror Karev is the only heroic flying mount that you're going to find in Parnas Coast. And oh boy, does it look darn cool. I mean, it's just covered in like these icy shards and it just looks so freaking awesome. All right, so let's see what the bestiary can tell us about how we can tame this fantastic flying mount. So it seems that... Karev's ice affinity is so powerful that only a knight like Asheram. So if you don't know who Asheram is, he is the rider of Apocalypse. And he is uh, his own heroic boss. He's not a world raid boss, but he is a heroic boss and the rider of Apocalypse. And he is nothing really to sneeze at, you know, if you're taking him on by yourself. If you're taking him on in a large group, well, he'll go down pretty fast. <laughs> Um, now, it seems like even he must use a runic talisman of some kind in order to battle Terror Karev. And it seems like we will need a Chilwall rune in order to tame Terror Karev. Now, as you've played the game, you've seen Terror Karev by the side of Rondo, helping Rondo out at various points throughout the story. So, it shouldn't be any surprise to you that the recipe also drops off of Rondo himself. So you're going to have to go run Heroic Frost Keep in order to get the recipe. Now, thankfully, the recipe itself isn't really too rare of a drop. It's very common. I've seen it a lot, especially on Heroic 5. In fact, I've seen like maybe two or three of them drop on Heroic 5 in just one run. So getting the recipe itself isn't really too much of a problem. You'll get that quite easily. And I mean, if you don't want to go run Heroic 5 Frost Keep, then you can just get that. You can get the recipe right off the auction house. Let me just pop mine up here. And chill wall rune recipe. And, you know, like you can see here, because it's so common in uh, the Heroic 5 Frost Keep that they're basically worthless on the auction house. I mean, it's just one gold. You know, if you don't want to go run uh, Frost Keep, then you can just pick this up on the auction house. Very, very, very easy to get this recipe. All right. So uh, let's take a look at what the recipe requires. So while it might be really easy to get the recipe, I can assure you that, oh, where is it? Oh, it's down in, it's down here. Let's see here, chill wall rune, there we go. I can assure you that getting the materials is not going to be easy. Now, the shopping list for the chill wall rune is not as long as the one that you're going to have to go through for Phantom. For Phantom, the shopping list was truly grindy. This shopping list isn't really that grindy, it's just far more difficult. You need some chilling shards, uh, those aren't too hard to get, I'm, I'll show you how to get those in just a minute. Then you're going to need some Mortal Tears. Yeah, these Mortal Tears are going to be really 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 difficult to get before I show you uh, or tell you where you can get them let's go take a look at the auction house look at this individually 308 gold for two 617 gold and there's only two of them on the auction house now there's a good reason for that because these mortal tears only drop off of Asheram. As far as, uh, as far as I know, I've never seen a drop off of Ra Asheram, but that's what I've heard. So um, that's a little bit of unconfirmed information. But I can definitely tell you it drops off of the Merciless Duranin in the Divinity Coast. 
and it drops off of Bismuth, up in Bismuth's Cove. Those are two world raid bosses. There is a lot of stiff competition for them. Multiple guilds uh, fighting over every spawn. And those are the only two um, monsters in the game. Well, I shouldn't call them monsters. Raid bosses in the game that drop the mortal tier. And you need two of them. So, yeah. <laughs> Good luck getting these. Now, I have through various means, well, mostly raiding, acquired two mortal tiers. So I've already covered the most difficult thing to get. Everything else is relatively easy. The chilling shards are easy. Even getting bone thorpe is relatively easy compared to getting the two mortal tiers. And I already have a bone thorpe here. Let's see, where is my bone thorpe? Here he is. All right. So. I already made a video on how to go tame a Bonethorpe, so I'm not going to cover where and how you can get Bonethorpe. If you want to know how, you can go check out my video on that. The other thing you're going to need, in addition to Bonethorpe, is you're going to need an Elite Seal Stone. And let's go seal him up, because we need a sealed Bonethorpe to complete our recipe for, or to complete our material list for the chill wall rune. All right, so now I've got a sealed bone thorpe. So I just need some familiar orbs and I need some elite taming potions. But first, before I go get that stuff, the chilling shards. Okay, so I'm at the entrance to the silver white valley, right where the transit shrine is. You can find this place right here on the map. And this big area is the Silver White Valley with the Icebreaker Camp and the Big Snow Camp. Now, once you've completed all the quests in this area, you will unlock these repeatables. Now, Cindy here gives the repeatable silver to the capital. And the reward for this repeatable is a chilling shard. As well as one alun. So... Both of them are really good rewards. The one that we're particularly interested in is the Chilling Shard. So I'm just going to go ahead and accept that. Now, if I look on my map, you can see I now have two places to go to. I can either go to the Big Snow Camp or I can go to the Icebreaker Camp. The two um, quest NPCs um, at these two locations give you another set of repeatable quests. Here, why don't I just... Oh, wrong mount. Let's use my golden Laiku. It's faster. So, as I was saying, they give you another set of repeatable quests. And those repeatable quests are going to satisfy the requirements for silver to the capital. So basically, you need to obtain a special item. It is called... Let's go to... Uh, my daily quest, silver to the capital. So I need cleansed white silver. And if I go here and talk to Troa Run, she's going to give me two repeatable quests. Both NPCs have uh, two repeatable quests. So you don't really need to go to both. You can just go to one. And they will give you enough of this uh, cleansed white silver to complete uh, silver to the capital. So I'm just going to go and accept both of these. And these are basically the same quests that you will have completed before while you were leveling up and going through Parna's Coast storyline. And all they require you to do is really just kind of hunt the same mobs that you hunted before. Alright. So, I'm sorry, Ice Yeti Patrolman, but for the sake of this taming guide, you are going to have to die. Goodbye. So I need to hunt uh, five of these uh, Ice Yeti Patrolmen. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch as I go through and hunt all five, so let's just skip ahead. Okay, so I finished killing all the Ice Yeti Patrolmen that I needed to. Now I'm just going to come over to the lake and grab some water. 
And that completes uh, that repeatable. Now I just need to hunt these guys, these Frostodons. And that will help complete the other repeatable. So I need, I believe, five meat from these guys. Yeah, he didn't drop anything. All right, let's grab this one. Yeah, nice crits. Cool, and there we go. We have found one Frostodon meat. Now, I'll, I only need five more, so again, I'm going to skip ahead because uh, there's no need for you to watch me farm Frostodons. All right, so having acquired my five Frostodon meat, now I just have to fly over to the Icebreaker camp and grab or steal some rice. And I just need three of these. There we go. Now, as you can see, Mr. Drawn here also offers his own repeatable quests and they give you the exact same thing you just have to hunt stuff and gather stuff in a different area so it's totally up to you which one you uh which quest npc you choose to go to it doesn't really particularly matter and you can't do both if you are under the idea that you could do both and get four of uh, these cleansing or four of the ore that you need to complete uh, silver to the capital, the cleansed white silver? Well, not so much because, as you're going to see once I turn this in, it doesn't matter how much cleansed white silver you get. There is a limit on just how, um, on how much you can do this quest. Here, let's turn these in, get my... Cleansed white silver, perfect. Now you see the repeatable quest over top of uh, Tro Run is gone. So those repeatable quests are only available once a day. And once I go and turn this in, back at the Silver White uh, Valley entrance, you're going to see that the quest, Silver to the Capital, is also only available once a day. All right, so let's turn this in. There we go. So I meet all the requirements. And you can see it's no longer available from Cindy there. So even if you do get four cleansed white silver, Cindy's only going to accept two. And that will complete the quest. And then you're going to have to wait another, well, until the next day when the, all the quests and stuff get reset in order to do it again. Now, I guess you could you know, go and grab two from the other camp or grab the other two repeatables from the other camp so you don't have to come back here and and do the quests later. But, you know, at the end of the day, you're only going to be getting one chilling shard per day per character. Now, as you can see, I already have two and that's because uh, my other character, Ivesa, helped me out a little bit. So because I have two characters that have completed this area, I can thus do the quest two times a day. All right, so that doesn't satisfy the requirements of our recipe. Let's go back to the Chilwalt rune recipe. I need three more. So time to go back to the auction house. All right, so I need Chilling shards. Okay, let's always go for the lowest price. So thankfully, because they're being farmed quite a bit, they are not that expensive. And yeah, three gold is not a bad price. So I'm just going to grab these three for eight gold. And now I have all the chilling shards that I need. Now, I also need some familiar orbs. Seems I'm running low. So, let's grab some of these. Uh, let's go for the lowest price. So, nine silver. I do use quite a bit of them, so I'm just going to grab a stack of 200. All right. 
So now the only thing I need are elite taming potions. Okay, so let's grab some elite taming potions. Now there's a trick to buying these. If you just right click on it, you're only going to buy one. And for our recipe, we need 50. So instead of right clicking 50 times, you can just shift right click and then you can select the quantity. And I just want 50. Confirm. Perfect. One of a kind item. Right here. So now I have everything I need to craft a chill wall rune. Now, of course, because, you know, this is such an expensive mark, we want to try and improve our chances of critting as much as possible, so I am going to use a Triumphant Crafting Chance Booster. Because, why not? Okay, so here we go. Let's craft ourselves a Chill Wall Rune. Okay, so it looks like I just got one Chill Wall Rune. I already had another one from raiding, so I have a total of two Chill Wall Runes at the moment, which gives me two chances at taming Terror Karev. Now, you don't have to craft a Chill Wall Rune. There are other ways to get it. One way is to get it straight off the world bosses, the Merciless Duranin and Bismuth. They have a low chance of dropping a Chill Wall Rune. You could have also have gotten it from the daily rewards. Now, uh, the heroic mark boxes, um, those days are already finished. But who knows, you know, in the future, maybe there will be some another daily rewards event, and there will be more heroic mark boxes that you can get through that event. So that's another possible way. Another way is through the achievements. Just recently, I mean like today, in the, in the recent update, they added new achievements for the dungeons, specifically the completing the dungeons on the heroic difficulty. And as you can see here, if you clear Frostkeep on heroic 30 times, they will give you Four Heroic Parna Familiar Mark boxes. Four of them. And I mean, that's not too difficult. I've already done it 24 times, so I mean, I'm pretty, I'm pretty close. And by receiving four boxes, that's four chances to get a Chill Wall Room. So I mean, that's pretty good. And it's not just Frostkeep. They've added similar achievements for all of the dungeons on the heroic difficulty. Now obviously the easier they get, the less boxes you're going to get. See here for Lava Light Cave, clearing it on heroic 30 times will net you two heroic Parna Familiar Mark boxes. But still, I mean, that is probably the best alternative to, um, to farming the materials yourself and crafting it or trying to farm the world bosses for it. And of course, probably a better alternative to buying it off the auction house. So I'm just going to open up my auction house and let's see how much chill wall runes are going for. So obviously we want to go with the lowest price and no, I don't want the recipe. I just want the familiars. So, <laughs> not cheap. Obviously, you know, the mortal tears are very expensive. So, you know, the chill wall rune price reflects that. So, if you want to buy a chill wall rune, then it's going to be fairly costly. <laughs> Yeah, 550 gold is the cheapest, and they go as high as 690 gold. I mean, that's fairly crazy. Okay, so where can you find Terror Karev? Well, he flies in an altitude of 350 meters in a triangle path. Now, that triangle path uh, starts at Warhul, around here. And it goes up to Hakura, 
And then it comes over to this... Now, I don't know what this is. It, it doesn't come over as far as this um, kind of weird flask-looking uh, banner thing. But you see this kind of little gray rock here? Just to the west of this tower icon? Yeah, right here, where the A is in Sorma Plain. So from Warhol up to Hakura, over to the A in Sorma Plain, and then back down to Warhol. He flies in this, in this triangular route in a counterclockwise direction. So that means he's flying this way, up, and then down. And he will take a short break just above Hakura and Warhol. Now, he is accompanied by two blue frost weverns who you will obviously need to take down before you can try any sort of taming attempt on um, Terra Karev himself. Now, Terra Karev is on what I believe to be a two-hour respawn timer. I haven't been able to definitively uh, figure it out. This is my best guess based on um, all the times I've seen him pop up in the different channels and where people have been, um, you know, kind of congregating to try and tame uh, Terra Karev. And that is probably your best bet, is to go congregate with the other people that are trying to tame him. If you don't have a group of friends with you already. Now, the best place to congregate seems to be right where I am right here. You see this road? Yeah, just to the right of it, kind of on that line between um, the A in Sorma Plain and Warhol. Straight through that line and right here. This seems to be the place where everyone congregates to try and tame him. He definitely pats through here. I'm not sure if he spawns here though. But anyways, I recommend uh, waiting here instead of flying around looking for him because um, as he comes through here, this is where everyone will probably take him down. If you fly around looking for him, the chances are you probably won't find him because by the time he hits this point, Someone's going to tame him. And a good landmark to use to know that you're in the right place is this tower down here, the one right beside Warhol. There'll be uh, two quest givers down here. You'll come through here as part of the main quest line. And this tower is a very good reference point. If you can see the tower kind of from the direction that I'm looking at it, and you're at you know the altitude that I'm at right now, then you, you know you're in the right place. Okay, there's Terra Karev, and uh, let's go get some hits on him. So he's a level 38 heroic, and yeah, he is tough. I mean, look at all these people beating on him, and look at his health. It's not going down too quickly. He's basically like a flying garm. Now, usually he's accompanied by two blue frost waverns. Doesn't look so in this case. Someone must have already taken them out before uh, we found them. And this guy's attacks hurt. Like, really hurt. Now, thankfully, a lot of his attacks are very easy to dodge, but you definitely want to, yeah, see. I think he was aiming at me. <laughs> you don't want to get in front of this guy and you don't want to be uh, the ridicule of his attacks because this guy will just waste you. Like, I kid you not, he will one-shot you. So you definitely want to be careful. You definitely want to get a group of your friends together uh, to help you come and tame this guy. As you can see, there are, is just a ton of other people here and they are all competing to tame him, I think they all have uh, chill wall runes and they all want to get on top of him. So yeah, it's it can be a little bit difficult. Alright, now before we can actually start taming him, we need to get him down to 20% um, because until you get him down to 20%, he is not tameable. He is very much like Agnes the Red and very much like Garm. And, well, okay, I should get into a taming position over top of him. Can I get on? Oops. Looks like the taming conditions were met. 
his health went uh, down low enough, but it looks like I missed my opportunity. Let's try and jump on him ag again. Oh, I got on him. Interesting. Well, okay, let's see how this goes. Getting green so far, that's good. Very happy about that. Getting green so far still, that's good too. Oh, I'm getting some reds. Don't want to get reds. I'm at 99%. Ooh, 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 ooh. It's getting pretty darn close. Oh! Oh, yeah. And Terror Karev has been successfully tamed. So just before we take a look at Terror Karev's skills and stats, I wanted to show you what happens when you seal him up. And you can see here, he gives some very, very nice stats that you can put into your armor. 102 physical attack and a plus 23 to all stats. That's on a high roll. On a low roll, it would be plus 9 and about 85 physical attack. But still, that's very, very nice. If not very, very expensive. <laughs> Alright, so let's take a look at Terra Karev's stats and his skills. He gets a maximum altitude of 950. That is very nice. That is higher than any other familiar that I'm aware of right now. And, you know, his other stats are, are pretty nice too. He's not really that fast. I think Agnes. Yeah, Agnes is faster. And so is Mycarios. So he's, uh, he's, he's a bit slower. And as for skills, he gets Mythic Resilience, so he's immune to all environmental effects. He gets Freezing Aura. Now, I've already taken the liberty of leveling mine to level 35 using a full growth potion. And so level 35 is his maximum level. And at that level, his Freezing Aura will give you an increase in your physical attack by 27%, and it will increase your magic attack by 27%. So that's pretty cool. Now he gets three attacks. He gets Ice Blast. He gets Ice Storm. And he gets Ice Breath. So he gets three different attacks and he has one passive and he gets Mythic Resilience. And that is how you tame the very awesome and cool looking Terror Karav. This has been Sorvistion. Don't forget to click like and subscribe to my channel for more taming guides for Riders of Icarus. Until next time, fellow adventurers, take care and have fun.